So, you have built yourself a free NAS, everything seems to be working just fine, you have done the copy of all your data to this free NAS, it's all there, all your photos, all your documents, everything you committed to this device, because what the hell, it's got free drives, nothing wrong can happen, and you are even, even scrubbing the data every once in a while, you are taking a look at the logs, just exactly the way as you should do it. And there comes this one day when you wake up and in the morning and you've decided to either to scrap the data at this moment or to take a look uh, at the web GUI is if, if everything is okay and you see this alert and your heart starts to pump the blood a little bit faster and you read that one of your drives has failed you or you've got some other problem and you are starting to freaking out because you have never swapped the drive in the free NAS or you don't have a complete copy of the free NAS or your copy is old or something else terrible happened so what to do don't worry we've got you covered i will show you all that you need to know if you will have a drive failure uh, how to actually mark all your uh, drives in your free NAS, how to swap the drive, how to backup, how to scrap the data, how to automate all that job. So actually all the things that you need to know if you are rocking your own free NAS. So stay tuned, let's talk about all these issues after the bump. So we've got two possible scenarios here. Either you have choose to use ZFS or you have built your surf NAS with a hardware controller. If you are using a hardware controller, you won't be able to see that much from a web GUI uh, via your web browser. That's because most of the things are not being handled by the free NAS, but by the controller and the software that is uh, using this controller. So in order to be able to check out the condition of your array at the moment, you will need to SSH directory to your free NAS and take a look uh, at uh, listing from a uh, command tool that is called arcconf. Uh, you will be able to see what's uh, the state of the array. You can use arcconf get conf and see uh, whether the drives are healthy, uh, whether you are rebuilding, whether you have to swap a drive. Also, most of those hardware controllers will give you, give you a sound feedback if there is a driver failure. So it will basically beep all the time uh, once the, it will detect inconsistency with a drive. So that's the scenario number one. That's assuming that you are using backplanes with some kind of hardware controller. So the scenario number two, uh, let's assume for a moment that you built yourself a free NAS with a ZFS storage. And there is a mechanism that it's built uh, directly and is in a ZFS file system that will allow you to discover any uh, data inconsistency, any data problem in a pool. It's very important to run something that is called a scrap so scrubbing your data. Uh, Zpool scrub and uh, and the name of your pool will resolve this comment and if you change scrub to status it will show you what's going on. Basically if there will be a problem in a ZFS pool it will be probably after a shutdown after a power outage so it was not uh, the server was not shut down as it should be, but there was a power outage that might lead to some problems. And second, um, you might have a hardware issue. So either a controller problem or most probably a hard disk drive problem. If that was a problem caused by power outage, you might use this zpool clear and uh, the name of uh, your pool. This should uh, solve this problem and all you will need to do is probably just run the scrub the next day again. But if uh, you will be scrubbing the data the next day and you will see that this problem reoccurred, well, uh, you've got yourself a hardware problem and there are some action that needs to be done. 
So now we've got probably a dead drive and we've got three drives configuration in this pool. So the last thing we want now is to um, break the pool completely by removing either the wrong drive or doing something terrible. So uh, right now it is very important that we uh, do everything as we should. So the first thing we want to do is to perform a complete copy uh, of the pool because it's still probably it's still working. Uh, you can pull the data if you don't have that copy. That's very first thing you should do. Second, you want to scrub the data. Yes, there are only two drives, but uh, it doesn't matter really because the pool will be completely operational and you can scrub the data and that's the thing that you should do. The thing number three is you should take a look uh, directly as I have shown this here on the screen uh, which drive is broken and we are using serial numbers to uh, verify which drive this is and to find the drive inside of our computer. Now there is uh, on every hard drive there is a small level that is showing the serial number if you've got uh, uh, a cabinet like I have here that the drives are somewhat randomly placed and you are unable to see the label of on all drives, you might prepare uh, additional labels like I have done that here uh, to be able to find the drive that is broken. But before you will pull the drive uh, away from this computer, well, the first thing you should know is to uh, offline this drive in a FreeNAS uh, software. So I will show you the process. One thing to keep in mind, it might be kind of hard to offline the drive that is no longer present. So mine returned after I rebooted the system. This problem is like uh, it come and goes, but I decided to replace the drive either way. Well, you need to go to storage and volume status, find the drive, click the offline as shown on the screen. And after, after that, uh, you should turn off uh, your FreeNAS and you will be able to start the physical swap of the drive. It's kind of simple and straightforward uh, process. One pro tip, I always try to not only to, uh, to replace the broken hard drive, but also I'm changing the SATA cable. Uh, I'm trying to use different SATA cable colors so to be able to easily find both ends of the cable. And also I will be, if there will be a chance, I will change the SATA port on the motherboard. The reason uh, for that is, well, you might not be 100% sure what was the problem. So it might be the drive, it might be the cable, or it might be uh, the SATA port. And you might as well uh, change it all uh, for this drive and diagnose the problem later. Okay, so we start our FreeNAS again. Uh, we see the status, that the status is still degraded. Don't be worried. You go to storage, uh, volume status, and then um, we just simply click a replace uh, on this drive, which will start the uh, resilvering uh, process. It's, it's like uh, rebuilding on the right. Uh, takes around the same time for your uh, volume, for your pool, uh, as the data scrubbing. So for me, uh, with like 400 megabytes in this pool, it was a little bit more than one hour. Uh, you will see that the disk replace uh, process has been initiated. This, this will start uh, resilvering data. And if you will go uh, an SSH, uh, and uh, take a look with a uh, ZPool uh, status, uh, you will see the uh, uh, progress uh, of this process. Once the data resilvering process uh, has been started, there is not much to do. Well, one thing you could do is to take off the shares uh, or just uh, don't access the data. If you've got this in some kind of uh, bigger network uh, environment where there are multiple users, you might take off the shares to prevent uh, transferring data from and to the FreeNAS. This is technically possible. However, the data access will be uh, very slow 
and also will make your resilvering process uh, take a longer time. So probably the best way um, just wait until this ends. You can you can uh, uh, always try the command uh, zpool uh, status uh, pool name to take a look uh, uh, on the estimated time uh, how long this will take and it's better not to access the data during this process. Um, we are not far off uh, to the end, so uh, depending on how much the data is there, for me it was like, as I said, um, one hour, hour and a half for uh, around uh, 400, 500 gigabytes of data. So uh, it, uh, it takes uh, almost the same time as uh, scrubbing the data, maybe a little bit longer. So it will vary uh, depending on how much uh, data you have there, but just simply wait uh, till it ends. Once the resilvering process is finished, we go to storage, uh, again volume status, and we will just simply detach uh, this one drive that we have been um, uh, that we physically have uh, replaced. So we just need to remove this one in order to have a healthy volume. And now we can see we've got all drives online, everything is cool, everything is green again. And uh, this alert in the right corner is just because uh, my backup uh, my backup drive is not connected at the moment. But um, I will connect this and I will show you also how I do this backup. Now, there is a lot of ways how you can copy your uh, data from the FreeNAS. For me, the most important thing it was uh, to have this process completely automated, to be able to move all the data from the pool uh, to external drive, to have a simple solution like one USB drive, I'm doing the copy from the pool to this USB drive, I'm able to connect this to a computer if something terrible might have happened with the pool, like it uh, would be encrypted by some kind of ransomware or uh, basically something terrible uh, could happen that uh, I won't be able to recover from this situation just from the pool. So you should always have a copy. So that's my, that's my copy. I'm uh, performing a cron job uh, every night and I'm copying all the data from the pool to this one drive. Uh, very simple, very simple solution. I will show you how to set up this process. Now, again, uh, the easiest way to create a backup uh, is to create a cron job. Uh, cron is a kind of uh, system uh, system task that will allow you to uh, run some kind of comment uh, periodically. Uh, you could use cron to uh, to create a scrap. Uh, this job, or you could uh, you could basically create a job uh, to copy all of the data that you are using. You just have to simply apply which day, month, hour, uh, what time you, you would like this job to be run. And then I'm using something like uh, AirSync. AirSync is um, basically a command that allows you to copy the data from one location to the second location. I've got the two mount points. The first one is uh, this EFS pool. The second mount point is this USB drive uh, that is connected directly to this computer. And I'm running uh, this command with the switch delayed. Now, this is not the best probably scenario for all of you. The way the delayed switch works here it will basically mm, delay uh, on the copy the data that have been removed from the original source. So if I will create a film, uh, it will be a copy uh, to uh, to this USB drive. And once I will uh, remove this film uh, from my original uh, ZFS pool, uh, during the copy, uh, this process will take a look if the original file exists, if it will be deleted, while well, it will also delete the data from the backup. This is not the safest way to perform backup. This got more to do with the things, uh, how I, what my workflow is. Uh, I have uh, also another copy uh, for older file if I change my mind. Uh, however, uh, you might just uh, use the same uh, command as I have used. Uh, you might disable the delete switch and you will have uh, the copy, uh, then the removed data will remain in the copy. 
it's all basically up to you how you would like to use this now uh, as you can see I don't have a full uh, the same amount of storage for the backup as I have uh, for the data in the ZFS pool uh, as long as uh, you don't have uh, your ZFS pool completely filled with the data you can have a smaller copy destination drive that's not a problem I'm aware of this fact I've got uh, just 1.5 terabyte drive there for the copy it will serve me good for a very very long time it would be nice to have a bigger drive here maybe if I will approach uh, the end of a storage on this drive I will swap this again it's very simple a uh, very simple process actually it took a little bit longer than I've anticipated a really long video but if you enjoyed it remember to leave me a thumbs up if you got any question you can leave them down in a comment section below I will be trying to answer them all thanks again for watching and see you next time bye